<sighs> Who's ready for some hater raid? Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back to do one of those videos that everybody wants. They like to see the hate. Well, I want to tell you guys, this is uh, maybe some books that uh, maybe I didn't have that good of a time with. Now, I want to say up front, guys, when I use the word worst in the title, what I mean is books that, you know, I had the worst time. It doesn't necessarily mean that the author is bad or they're, they're the worst or the writing is the worst. Uh, definitely not meant to be hate that way. I'll never criticize an author in that way because I don't believe that and I definitely don't think that I could do any better. You're never going to see me making one of those videos about how this is what you need to do to be a better author. Not at all. These are books that maybe I just did not have a great time with. So I want to say with a video like this, guys, highly subjective. These are probably going to be unpopular opinions, but I wanted to get that out there because I know that some people do think that these things are personal attacks and they are not personal attacks, at least not for me. If you love these books, man, that's that's awesome. I'm happy for you, man. I'm excited. I want you to enjoy things. That is why I am here. But for these guys, these are going to be some books that, uh, since I started my channel, I started my channel in 2019, and I came up with about 15 books that I really just had a bad time reading. And I'm going to kind of talk briefly about each one going year by year, starting now with the year 2019. I have to think the first book that I raged on on this channel was Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks. That is book number four in the Lightbringer saga. And the reason that that book upset me so much is because I thought Lightbringer, the first two books, were really, really great. I really liked where he was going. Sure, it had a lot of like the juvenile things that Brent Weeks is known for, but it still was a really enjoyable idea. I thought the magic system was just superb. Book three was like, eh, I kind of see maybe some cracks in the foundation, but you know, it didn't jump the shark. And then book four happened, and oh my God, it was so bad, guys, that I read four books that are like this thick, and I still to this day haven't read book five, and I have no plans to do so. So Blood Mirror just... It took one of those things where he, you could tell this was meant to be a trilogy, got some success, and he just expanded it, didn't know how to kind of reel himself in, I think, because book four was literally, guys, almost a thousand pages of fluff, of filler, and it just has one of those jump the shark moments where you look down and realize you're on Mars, that's how far you jump the shark. So uh, I've talked about that numerous times on the channel, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. Next up is The Daylight War. This is Peter V. Brett, book number three of The Demon Cycle. This is another one of those series I started around the same time as Lightbringer, where I liked book one. Book two was divisive, but I fell on the, the side that liked it. I liked what he was doing. Okay, you're not going to be focusing just on, you know, uh, Arlen. You're going to be focusing also on Jardir. You're going to give me a different point of view for each one of these books. Problem was, is book three gave me a point of view on one of the characters I had no interest in knowing more about, Nenevra. Uh, But it also was the kind of thing where, look, guys, I am a warm-blooded American male. I love a good sex scene as much as the next person, but it has to matter. I don't like it in lieu of good storytelling, and that book was low-key erotica. Uh, big time. And it was just like, this is like I'm reading uh, the novelized version of Spartacus Blood and Sand, where it's just like, hey, we don't know what to do with these characters. Let's just have them screw. Why not? It was just really, really bad. And I, I think it was one of those things where I was like, oh, well, you know, there's still time to turn around. Now I got a little bit into book four and realized, no, that is not how... <sighs> yeah, that's not how it's going to go. So uh, yeah, that, that was pretty much the series killer for me. I tried to keep going. I just realized it wasn't going to happen. Here might be the first shocker of the list in 2019, The Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan. It's book number eight of Wheel of Time. Now look, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's not even the worst Wheel of Time book. Well, I think for me guys, is everyone and their mother, when I started reading Wheel of Time, said, oh my God, I got to warn you about Crossroads of Twilight. It's that bad, right? So I think I had had my expectations for Crossroads of Twilight so low I actually thought it was just whatever. You know, it didn't bother me as much as it bothers everybody else. No one warned me about this book where basically it took 500 pages for them just to make a decision on something. And I know a lot of people will come to me and be like, no, this happened, this happened, this happened. Yeah, but by the, after the first 500 pages of that, I didn't care about the finale of that book. So that's probably one of those that if I've got, if I ever revisit something like that, uh, I might enjoy a little more. I think it was just because, like I said, no one had really prepared me 
for how painful that book was. So, uh, yeah, I, I know I have the very unpopular opinion of having uh, The Path of Daggers as my worst Wheel of Time book, even worse than Crossroads of Twilight. But you know what? I do still love the series, and I feel like, you know what? Uh, you can criticize the things that you love. It's kind of like a little brother. You can do that, and you still love them in the end. Let's move along to 2020. Actually, my most celebrated year, because I only have two books from this year. So that means it's a pretty great year overall, right? Emperor of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. Another unpopular opinion is, I think it's because everyone told me, Mike, you love First Law. I really think that you would enjoy Broken Empire by Mark Lawrence. And the first book, it was like, it was interesting. I was like, wow, I mean, these characters are really unlikable. And then the second book, and they became even more unlikable. And after trying to tell me, you know, hey, this is the reason why they were unlikable in that first book. And here's what's really going on. And no, it just, it to the point where like George was just, I, he was just a sociopath. I couldn't relate with the character like at all. I love my damage, my my brutal character. Like I mean, Sandan Glockta from First Law is one of my favorite characters in literature. So I like a damaged character. I like a, a character who maybe doesn't do very nice things. I need to have something in there though. And I just I, I just I lost interest and I quit that series with like 300 pages left or maybe less. I, I know that whenever I say that, someone's like, hey, that book's only like 350 pages long. You know what? I, I mean, I don't know. I was reading it on the Kindle. I don't actually have a physical copy of it. I just know that I was about halfway through with it when I said, nah, it's not happening. And sadly, I haven't tried Mark Lawrence again since then, but I should because I'm willing to give him another chance. I really do want to read Book of the Ancestor. The Hunger by Alma Katsu. That one... Uh, it hurts so bad because uh, I, big time history buff, guys, I love American history and I have just spent way too much time learning about the Donner Party. And the thing was, is this was going to take a kind of a twist on the Donner Party and make a horror story out of it. And I said, like, well, that's a neat idea, obviously. The thing was, is the real history, scarier than this book. It was like, that was a story that didn't need to have, I mean... We know why the people were starving. You didn't have to add a twist onto why they were starving. It, 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 I mean, yeah, it just it was brutal. It was just brutal. It was not scary at all. It was just, I was just like, just upset. And I, I want to say it's probably because, like I said, I know the real history and how mortifying it is. And this book wasn't nearly as mortifying as what seriously did happen. So I think really just a, a fictionalized version of what actually happened would have been scarier than this. But I have not visited uh, Miss Katsu again since then. 2021. Here's where we might start getting to some of those that uh, uh, some people might be flipping some tables over. If they didn't already do that for Will of Time, they might do it here. Uh, the Dragon Republic. This is book number two of The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. And the look, I actually kind of liked Poppy War because of how brutal it was, how she didn't pull any punches. It was very gruesome. It was very grimdark. I liked where she was headed with it. I was like, okay, I don't like the main character right now, but I think this is going to be like the nice growth arc. No. Uh, I got through Dragon Emperor and decided, or sorry, Dragon Republic and decided not to go for uh, is book the Drowned God or Drowned Emperor. I can remember what book three is even called. Decided not to read book three because uh, your main protagonist, or your main protagonist, I don't, I don't have to love them, but I don't like. I mean, obviously, to the point where I was pretty much rooting against her in this book, and she was so unlikable. And I have this real big thing. Like I said, it's just it's just something about growing up uh, with a you know in a household that was military. My dad served in the military. Uh, I love like Star Trek. So I believe in chain of command. And a lot of things in modern YA fiction now is just like completely ignoring your superior officers. And I mean, I think the main character in this actually like takes a swing at her superior officer one time, and no repercussions for it. I'm just it just took me out of it. That's not what ruined it for me. I just the story was like I just didn't care. I got to the end of that book, which felt like it took forever, and I just wasn't caring. And I, again, like I said, I don't have to think that your your protagonist is the greatest, but I need to be rooting for them somewhat. And I mean, I wanted the character to die. And so I said, uh, when, when I heard book three was divisive, I was like, okay, well, then I think I will just go ahead and bow out. Next one shouldn't be a shock to anybody because I know I am not the target demographic for Lee Bardugo books. But Siege and Storm, book number two of Shadow and Bone. And that was one of those kind of things I was just kind of reading for fun because a group of me and my patrons on my Discord, we were going to watch the Netflix adaptation together. So I said, why don't I read it? And I read the first book, and I was like, yeah, I mean, it's clearly not written for me. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, I was like, it's fine. It's not. I've, I've read worse, guys. I mean, it's it's better than Twilight. Yeah, I read the first two Twilight books. What of it? 
I feel like if you're going to bash something, guys, you need to have some actual, I mean, that's like that's like bashing a headline without reading the article. So uh, yeah, I read the first two Twilight books and was like, how are you guys doing this? You know, Because I feel like before you can really trash something, you need to read it. And with this, it's like, I, I was like, okay, it's not that bad. It's, I, I've seen much worse. And then I got to book two, and yeah, it's much worse. Basically, guys, just everything I dislike about YA uh, is that, YA fantasy, is that uh, love triangles are dumb. And, and I hate that uh, the end of the world is at hand and our protagonist is caring about choosing between two cute boys. That just drives me nuts. Now, obviously, there's a market for that because... These writers are billionaires, you know, for doing this. So clearly there is an audience for it and I am not it. So that should not be a shock. But yes, that is one that I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I actually read that book. But you know what? I actually did like the Netflix series. Pretty fun. Maybe it's just because I was watching it with some friends. You know, who knows? Uh, this one is going to be a, a little bit of a surprise, I think. But maybe not when you realize I haven't finished the series yet. And it's because of this book, Reaper's Gale by Stephen Erickson. Book number seven of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. It's one of those things where I feel like you kind of got, uh, you know that we had that big build up to Pacquiao Mayweather and we always thought it was gonna be this great fight and then you get the fight and it's not that good. This is kind of like that, except imagine at that fight, like uh, someone came out of the stands and decided to fight uh, Pacquiao instead. That's kind of how it felt. So it was just, it built this big marquee matchup and it didn't really even happen and what did happen wasn't that exciting. But the thing was, is all I cared about was the characters that we had been building up, you know, all through the series. And Erickson does what he always does. He adds a bunch of new characters that I didn't care about. And then those characters have no point in that book whatsoever. And it drove me crazy that that book did not need to be 1,400 freaking pages to tell the story that it told. You could have told that story in 500 pages. And I think it's what burned me out on Malazan. Now, I do still intend to return. And I know everybody scoffs when I say that. They think I'm just, that's just a line. Guys, again, I took a six-month break on Wheel of Time. And I finished it. And it's one of my top 10 fantasy series ever. So I will finish it. Just This was the book that burned me out. It didn't need to be that long. And it focused way too much on stuff that I did not care for. The Fisherman by John Langan. Is it Langan or Langdon? Sorry if you're if, you, if he happens to be watching this. I doubt it. Uh, the Fisherman was one that a lot of people recommended to me. Said it is basically imagine Stephen King writing an H.P. Lovecraft story. Oh, it's a great sales job. Excellent. Let's check it out. And I start at the beginning and I really enjoy it. Like the first like 25 percent, I think it's really really good. Then he goes into a flashback, and he stays there for the next 65 percent of the book, to a point to where when we got back to the real time story, I just didn't care anymore. Uh, so I think it's like, imagine you're reading Pet Cemetery and the part where Judd's telling the history of, of someone who came back from the Pet Cemetery. Imagine if he'd stayed there for the rest of the book. That's what happened with The Fisherman. It just, it took me out of it. It was like, if you want to do a period piece book, why didn't you just do a period piece book? Why is more than half of your book the flashback? So it just, it just didn't land for me. Uh, it had so much potential. I love the setup. And then it just was a big, big letdown. That's actually one of my saddest, saddest kind of letdowns because I really was expecting to love that book. And uh, yeah, it's just a shame. Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Now, I know that's probably my... Besides Name of the Wind, that's probably my most unpopular opinion on this channel. Uh, I don't know if it's just the Western thing. I don't know if it's Cormac McCarthy is such a genius that he doesn't need to use punctu punctuation. It was just one of those things where I was like, these, these characters are like cartoon villain bad guys. I mean, like, there's even one part, guys, where they're, like, shooting puppies. It's just like, how can I make these characters even more ridiculously over the top? I mean, maybe I could have given them mustaches that they just twirl the whole time. It's just... It, I love grimdark, guys, and nothing's more grimdark than the American West. I get that. I mean, that's just a brutal time in our history, but I just... I didn't care about any of these characters. I thought they were all scumbags. I know everybody carries on about the main villain of this. I thought it was just all right. And uh, again, like I said, if I wrote a story, uh, hell, if I wrote a, if I wrote a text message to you and didn't use any punctuation, you'd call me an idiot. But Cormac McCarthy doesn't. He's a genius. So I don't know. It's just something about it. And I can't say it's his writing style because I like The Road. I love The Road. I thought The Road was brilliant. So I don't know. I don't know. This one just did not land for me. And I know when I talked to Joe Abercrombie, he was none too pleased to hear that since that was like apparently his favorite book of all time. Same with Stephen King, I believe. So or it might be Lonesome Dove. Uh, uh, getting those mixed up. How about some Stephen King? You think that I have a list like this and I won't have Stephen King on it because he's my favorite author, right? No, even the best miss once in a while. Even Michael Jordan had a bad shooting night once in a while. Lisey's story was a complete flop for me. 
And I think that the idea was really good. I just thought the delivery was really poor. The way that he wrote it, he was basically having flashbacks in his flashbacks. That's never a narrative that works. He uses so many like made up words that, uh, you know, they make sense in time, but he took too long to really explain to you what was going on to where it just almost sounded like word salad at times. You never knew really what was going on. I think there's a really good story in there and that's evident by the uh, adaptation on Apple TV was quality, it was really good. I actually loved it, which he did right. So there's one of those things where like maybe he got far enough away from it, he can look at it critically and say, hey, I should have done it this way, this way, this way, or it's just something that the medium of TV did better than the book. So as I thought that the series was, was superb, but this book was definitely a big miss for me, as was book number three of the Farsher trilogy, Assassin's Quest, which is kind of wild when I think back on it now because I'm reading uh, the next book in that series, Live Ship Traders, Ship of Magic. I like it a lot. And I like the first two books in the Far Search trilogy a lot. So I think Assassin's Quest is just like, hey, you know what? When you got a series that's 14, 15 books long, eh, you, not all of them are going to work. It's going to happen. I mean, look at Wheel of Time. You know, it has some books I didn't like. And I love that series. So uh, Assassin's Quest, to me, it was just, it took too long getting there. Uh, I felt like that book didn't need to be almost 900 pages long. And then yet somehow still feel like the ending got rushed. So that was my biggest problem with it. I'll, I'll, way too much. I mean, look, Robin Hobb, magnificent writer. I just don't need to hear her describe this snowy forest to me at, at, at that many times, that that long. And not just like not just about hunting, but talking about hunting and then actually hunting. It just I feel like a real a nice scalp. An editor could have really got that book down and gotten the good stuff, and then said, you know what? How about we expand? on this last act a little bit. So uh, I've had people tell me, hey, uh, if you ever do a Romley Oldings reread, <laughs> uh, you might actually enjoy that more. And you know what, that's possible. It's possible that some things might get revealed to me that make that makes more sense. But yeah, it was a really just a slog of all slogs that I had read up to that point that year. And that was a that was a real rough read for me. But it was never anything where I wasn't going to return to the Rumble Elders. Because like I said, the first lady of fantasy, I think she's a fantastic writer. And uh, yeah, I, I trust the process on this one. That one was just a miss for me. So how about this year, guys? Has there been anything this year? This would be a nice little preview for you for my biggest disappointments of the year. Uh, I got three of them on here. And uh, the first one, because uh, I, I got to mention that it is a retry. I did a video recently where I said books I'd like to try again. And the first one that I tried was The Way of Shadows, which is the first book of the Night Angel trilogy by Brent Weeks. And <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I, I just thought maybe, maybe something changed. I don't know why I didn't just trust my memory on this one. Because it wasn't like one of those things where like you read something when you're a teenager and it didn't click for you and you read it as an adult and it works out fine. And this was like five years ago I tried to read this and I didn't even finish it this time, guys. It was just, it's so painfully bad. And and I hate, I hate talking about it because I know there are a lot of people who love Brent Weeks. There's a lot of people, this was their first fantasy series. They adore it. And I get that, man. Again, me not liking it doesn't take it away from you. I just... I mean, I wanted to literally strangle myself reading the book. It was so painfully awful and cringe. And I don't ever use the word cringe because I think it's so overused. But holy hell, that book is something else, guys. And fool me once, right? I mean, I just, I, I, I just, I'm never going to trust Brent Wakes. I, I just, the guy just, I don't know. I think he's actually a pretty good writer. He just, he tries things that he shouldn't be trying, I think. Let's just leave it there. Uh, next up is one that has a really, really big following, and people really wanted me to love this series, to the point where they actually bought me every book in the series. And I feel so bad because viewers sent me every book, and I'm tapped out after book two. I'm talking about Soul Smith. This is book number two of the Cradle series by Will White. I understand why people love this series. Look, uh, people are telling me, oh, well, you know, you haven't read a lot of manga and maybe that's why it didn't really work for you. I mean, I don't know. I, I love Berserk. I, I love Death Note. I love Vinland Saga. I don't remember I don't remember uh, uh, Thorfinn ever being like, you know what? Uh, I can't do that right now because I got to go grind for XP. And that's basically what Soul Smith was. You, it felt like you were just, everything was about getting to the next level. And it's like, guys, I love playing Final Fantasy as much as anyone. I don't like to read about it, you know? So it just... I don't know. It was just one of those things, progression fantasy, I believe it's called, where you're just your characters just just try to get power ups. That's just that's not interesting to read to me. I never done the the, the lit RPG books or anything like that. Maybe I, I don't know. It just it was a miss for me, and I wanted to like it. I really really did because of how many viewers just love that series, and I wanted to because like I said, you guys sent me all the books. I really wanted to love it for you. It just 
it's not my style of fantasy at all. Uh, the characters are not anything special, and I gotta have something about the characters that I enjoy, and I have to enjoy their struggle more than I have to advance to the next level. I mean, in book two here, there's literally a part where they're like, one of the characters is imprisoned, and it's like, oh, hey, bust me out of here. Oh, no, you should do this so you get to the next level. Okay, the, that logic just blows right by me. So it's not a series for me, but hey, if you guys do love it, and clearly you do, I think it's awesome. I think Will White's a great dude. He actually reached out to me on Instagram, and I wish him nothing but success, and he's having a lot of it. So hey, keep doing what you're doing, sir, because there is an audience for it. I just might not be the one for it. And the last one here, guys, last book, this one actually kind of disappointed me because I think it was the first miss for Michael J. Sullivan. I felt like he's been automatic. I even thought his first book in Legends of the First Empire was pretty good. And it, I was saying, that okay, maybe it's not just Royce and Hadrian. Maybe Michael J. Solomon's good at this. And then Age of Swords happened. And that is the last Jedi of fantasy books for me. <laughs> it's just like, wow. You just completely... I just made this whole series unrealistic with three different decisions that you made in the book. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like, you're progressing this civilization way too fast. Like, yesterday, these people couldn't even read and now they're they're using uh they they make a codex to decipher a new language in like a matter of minutes and they they've already learned how to write and tell stories and keep histories and stuff and this all happens like that i was like you guys didn't even have the wheel and now you're like writing and you're you're you're, you're doing all these you're, you're decoding these lang an actual linguist couldn't do these things that they're doing in 90 minutes it's just i don't know it just kind of completely took me out of it. It made all a lot of about half of the characters completely unlikable, and the ones that weren't that great. I don't know. I feel like the main protagonist, like all she does is cry. Like every page, she's crying, and I'm just like, okay, you know. So again, maybe it's just not for me. I feel like maybe that might be for audiences a little younger than me. I'm just going to stick with Royce and Hadrian the rest of the way when it comes to Michael J. Sullivan because I think he's an amazing guy and I think uh, he's a great writer. I just think that series maybe because I got to book four in that series and I don't feel like it improved too much. So uh, I just decided to go ahead and walk away from it and just stick, like I said, to the Royce and the Hadrian novels. But guys, that are the 15 books since I started this channel that I say I had the worst time with. Now, I know I'm not alone. I know you guys have some books. In fact, people are probably so angry right now, they're gonna go downstairs in the comments and they're gonna tell me, hey, this is why the first law sucks. Hey, this is why Stephen King sucks. Hey, if that's what you gotta do to get those demons out, man, that's what this is a platform for. It is a platform for you to talk about things that you don't like that I did like, and for me to talk about things I like that you didn't. And we always go in the comments and we'll talk about them. You know what? And we can still go get that cup of coffee afterwards. So guys, why don't you drop in the comments and let me know maybe some books that you haven't had a good time with the last couple of years. I would love to hear about them. So uh, drop in the comments, guys, and I will talk to you there.